We're glad that you're here with us on this beautiful spring morning. We do have a couple of things about which we want you to be aware. Uh, the truck is still parked out front if you bought canned goods uh, for the food pantry. Also, they will take a check if you want to do that. Our wonderful Wednesday this week, uh, we'll have hamburgers and hot dogs grilled, and, and uh, the proceeds will go to our camp fund, which helps to pay part of our kids' way to Camp Lucon or Aldersgate. And so we want you to be aware of that. There is a mistake in the bulletin today. It, um, the the um, the group that's going to Williamsburg. No, it is next Sunday. Excuse me. There's not a mistake. The the people going to Williamsburg. The meeting is May fifth, not today. Just want to let you all know that. Um, we are going to celebrate uh, our newest confirmation class. Uh, it's just one of those uh, strange things that most of the kids attended the 9 o'clock service, the GNN service, so we did the actual con uh, the confirmation in the 9 o'clock, but we will want to introduce to you all, all five of our youngsters, and then uh, have you receive them. So you'll see that, that that comes a little bit later in our worship. We would like to ask before we start the prelude that we take a moment of prayer. The roadmap team has been uh, hard at work looking to the future and what things our congregation may face in that future. And so they've asked that we take a moment of prayer in each of our services to pray for the roadmap and for the future of First United Methodist Church. So at this time, will you bow with me and let us pray. Hear these, our prayers, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts to worship the Lord.
morning. Please join me as we read the call to worship responsively. Let everything that is being praised the name of the Lord. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars shall praise the name of the Lord. Young men and women alike, old and young together, shall praise the name of the Lord. You shall praise your name, O God, for your glory is above earth and heaven. Let us worship God. Let us worship by singing hymn number 62, and please uh, stand as you are able, and notice the instructions in the bulletin. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your love and your grace so abundant, so overflowing, that you receive us in spite of our fear and our timid lives of faith. As you encourage the first Christians to witness in the face of all risks, encourage us to follow your call rather than to cower before the powerful. Grant us peace in midst of the challenge, and fill us with your Holy Spirit, through the risen Christ. Amen.
you'll turn to page 861 in the Psalter. We will do the response of reading with the um, sung response. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise, Praise the Lord, all his angels. Praise the Lord, all his hosts. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all shining stars. Praise the Lord, highest heavens and all waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created. Who established them forever and ever and fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and snow and smoke, stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and hi all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maids together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful ones, for the people of Israel who are near their God. Praise the Lord. As I mentioned before, our confirmation class took their vows in our last service. But I think it's important for all of our uh, three worship services to meet and greet these five youngsters. So, if they would come up and with their friends and faith and family, if you will line up over here, I will introduce them. And then we have a response that we need to make to them as well. While they're coming, I want to thank Tanya uh, Kenner. She and I were, had the great privilege of teaching these youngsters. Also, one of the things we do, we have a friend in faith with each of them, and they were a big help throughout the entire process. And so that's something that God might use you for in the future. Think about it. So, first, Catherine Fisher Emberton. Catherine, if you'd step forward. Catherine's the shortest, I think, so you have to... Anyway, Catherine and her friend in faith was Janice Stern. Alexander DeWitt Hardison, Alex, stands forward. And Cleland White was his friend in faith. Ricky Jr. Lewis and Tim Simpson is his friend in faith. Ryan Lee Weber and James Hale was his. And uh, Sean Thomas Weber, Steve Criswell was his friend in faith. Um, one of the things that we, ways we respond, if you would turn in your hymnals with me please to page um, 48 in your hymnal. Now they have stepped forward and they said, one of the things they said is, I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. All of them have said that to me privately and in front of the congregation at 9 o'clock. Now in addition to that, we ask them, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and hold it by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And you all said, I will, right? 
Thank you. So they knew that. And so our response, it's not just an occasion where this is one day and done. But like a family, they grow and we grow with them. And our response is at the bottom of the page. And after I do this introductory remark, if you would join with me in addressing the confirmation class. Brothers and sisters, I commend to your love and care this day. Catherine Fisher Emberton, Alex DeWitt Hardison, Ricky Jr. Lewis Jr., Ryan Lee Weber, and Sean Thomas Weber, and whom we this day receive into membership of our congregation. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And our response as a congregation is, we rejoice to recognize you as members of Christ's Holy Church. We bid you welcome in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that surrounded by steadfast love, you may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to eternal life. And as also part of our response, will you please receive them as a part of our congregation? Will you bow with me, please? Eternal God, as these youngsters continue along the road of following Jesus, we ask that you bless them, walk beside them, and guide them, help them to grow. Help us to grow in Jesus' way, too. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. That you're here today, especially if you're visiting with us. We are glad you're here. We want to acknowledge family members from Roy's families here. We're glad always to have you in our midst. And if you're visiting, we are glad that you are here today. Uh, as the, the ushers come forward with the attendance pads, we do appreciate your filling those out and ask you to continue to do that. And if you would now stand and greet your neighbor in the name of Jesus. come now to a time of prayer in our worship. After our call to prayer, we will have a time of congregational prayer and we will close with the Lord's Prayer. Will you bow with me, please? God, 
We've gathered here today as your people, trying to be committed to you in thought, word, and deed. However, when we turn our desires for power or towards prestige or money or influence, we know that our commitment is not true. Forgive us. We have just celebrated five youngsters making a commitment to you, a commitment to walk in the paths where you would have them walk. We ask for your special guidance and protection for them and for all who want to walk in the paths where you would lead us. Help us as your people, O oh God, to recommit ourselves to you this very day. We give you our lives, our service, our stewardship, our families, and all that we have. These we commit to you. Because you committed to us, your son. He died on a cross for each and every one of us. And that makes a profound difference in life, in death, in life beyond death. We commit to you those lives we do not touch as we could. The poorest of the poor, the addicted, the victimized, the starving, the alienated. Help us even when we feel separated from others to continue to pray for them and with them and lift them to you. We lift up our own weaknesses to you, O God. And we ask that your continued presence would be with us to strengthen us and lead us into further roads of service for you. Grant us your strength, the strength for true commitment, even as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
today is, comes from John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is number 408 in your United Methodist hymnal, The Gift of Love. Please stand as you're able. Please be seated. Will you bow once again with me, please? God of grace and God of glory, let your words be heard this day and help them to help us to love one another. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. An article almost 20 years ago in USA Today prescribed an interesting course of treatment for medical professionals. It noted that to make patients feel better about their doctors, and perhaps doctors to feel better about their patients, some analysts were suggesting acting lessons. Now, as accomplished actors, physicians who find themselves too swamped, too stressed, and that really feel the need for compassion for their patients, they thought that if they acted that way, then they might actually be that way. Actually, the suggestion isn't that far off. After constantly dealing with needy, hurting people, all members of helping professions, be they doctors or social workers or even clergy, find that there has to be a sort of a protective shell because if you take it home with you every day, it drains you. And so you develop that. But it found that the acting probably didn't help a whole lot. The USA Today study did find it, its feet planted firmly on the ground, though, when they admitted that it probably wouldn't work. Still, when you think about love and compassion, you think about things like family and friends and being married. But often, love doesn't take time to feel. Two weeks ago, tomorrow, Boston Marathon. An explosion happens. What happens? Many people run away. 
But there were a few that ran toward the explosion. Before they knew anything, they ran that way. I heard one person ask about it, and he said he didn't even think about it, but that he knew he would be needed. He did it automatically. There was a story about a man who went into a burning house to save three children. When asked how he felt, he said, I didn't feel anything. I just knew I had to act. There was a mother who lifted a log off of her son's leg, and she didn't realize it was heavy until she put it down. When love and compassion for another takes over completely, it's expressed through actions, not feelings. You cannot gradually and cautiously feel your way towards a loving action. Love is action. Genuine love often looks before it leaps. So we need that reminder today as we look as followers of Jesus at the new commandment to love one another. Too often we think of love as being an emotion, and there is an emotional side to it, but love is also an action. Did Jesus really mean it? Mean it? He sure did. What that love looks like can make it a dramatic impact upon people. It can save lives. It can save souls. So the text shouts, love one another. Don't act. Do it. N.T. Wright, Bishop of the Church of England and Biblical Scholar, says there are several salient points about this text. It's a part of the farewell discourse that's in the Gospel of John. And now it goes from chapter 13 to chapter 17. And in it are some of the most influential and intimate and important portions of the Gospel. In it, in chapter 13, just before this, we've read about the Last Supper. We read about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. In chapter 14, Jesus names the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will come to be the Counselor, the Comforter, when He is no longer there. Also in chapter 14, in this, in my Father's house, there are many rooms. In chapter 16, He is the true vine. There are some of the most memorable verses in the Bible. In chapter 17, Jesus prays for everyone that comes after Him. For all who would follow, Jesus prays for you and for me. Chapter 16, Jesus explains that he's going away. They can't follow yet, but he is still concerned. He also talks about only for the second time that he is, describes himself as the Son of Man that he's going to be glorified. Now we think of glory as winning and as victory, but in the John's Gospel, glorified means that he will hang on the cross. So there is a different measure in chapters 13 through 17. Some would call the heart of John's gospel. There is a different measure for what is right and good. And there is a different measure for what Jesus' followers should do. There is a new command. Love one another. Don't just act like it. A. Roger Merrill, in his best-selling book, First Things First, tells the story of a business consultant friend who was moving into a new home. He decided to hire a landscape professional and had a friend who had a doctorate in horticulture. And she was extremely bright and knowledgeable. And to her, he said that he had a great vision for the grounds, but because he was busy and traveled a lot, he emphasized the need to create in his garden a way that would require little maintenance on his part. Automatic, automatic sprinklers were a must, and he was looking for as many labor-saving devices as he could get. Finally, his friend, the horticulturalist, said, Fred, I can see what you're saying. But there's one thing you need to deal with before we go any further. If there is no gardener, there is no garden. If there is no love, there is no community of Jesus. Without it, the community is bankrupt. It may be called many things, but it is not the church of Jesus Christ. Without love, there is no relationship to Christ. Love of God, love of neighbor, love of self. A new commandment he gave, love one another. Don't just act like it. 
The new commandment actually is central to many statements in the Old Testament. We see in Leviticus 19.18 that we are to love one as to love our neighbors as ourselves. And Jesus said that, and somebody asked, Who is my neighbor? The story of the Good Samaritan follow. And it's not the newness of the words of Jesus that make a difference, but rather it's the mode of love, the depth of love. In fact, if you are going to look at a central theme in the heart of John's Gospel, chapters 13 through 17, it is love. It is love that allowed Jesus to break the bread, to share the wine with his disciples, even though he knew they were going to deny him or in one case, betray him. It was love that allowed him to take off his cloak, to put a towel around his waist, to drop to his knees, and to do the job of a slave to wash his disciples' feet. It is love for his followers that, said, that allowed him to, to say and to tell them of the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the comforter. It was love in times of stress and hurt that allowed him to tell them, in my father's house there are many rooms. It is love that provides the basis, the vine. The father is the vine dresser, but Jesus is the vine to, who, to whom we much must attach ourselves. So as we see that entire, that entire section give away, there is a central theme, and it is about love. Love as I have loved you. Jesus is the example. Jesus is saying, copy me. No one is better than anyone else. The kingdom work is work of a servant, not of a master. If you follow me, serve. Don't act. In a delightful Peanuts cartoon strip, Lucy, you can picture her. Schroeder is playing the piano. Lucy is laying with her elbows on the piano. And she looks up to Schroeder and she says, Guess what? If you don't tell me you love me, I'm going to hold my breath till I pass out. So looking up from his piano, Schroeder says, Breath holding in children is an interesting phenomenon. It could indicate a metabolic disorder. A 40 milligram dose of vitamin B6 twice a day would be helpful. I think it would be, I think that's probable. And vitamin B6, that's what you need. You need to consider eating more bananas, avocados, and beef liver. In the last frame of the cartoon, he goes back to his piano and Lucy sighs and said, I asked for love and what did I get? Beef liver. <laughs> Christ asked for love from us and all too often we have to question how we respond. The commandment to love one another. So what does that love look like? The love of Christ that we are to emulate. Christ-like love is secure. In his book, The Grip of Grace, Brian Chappell tells of a plane crash on August 16, 1987. Northwest Airlines Flight 225 crashed after taking off from the De Detroit airport. 156 people were on the plane. 155 died. One survived, a four-year-old from Tempe, Arizona, named Cecilia. At first, the authorities thought that she must have been in one of the cars around where the plane crashed. But sure enough, when they checked the pastor's manifest, Cecilia's name was there. Cecilia survived because as the plane was falling, Cecilia's mother, Paula, unbuckled her own seatbelt, got down on her knees in front of her daughter, wrapped her arms and body around Cecilia, and wouldn't let go. That's the love of Christ. That's what Christ's love is like, wrapped around us and will not let go. God acted in Jesus on our behalf. Secondly, Christ-like love is encouraging. The art artist Benjamin West tells how he actually became a successful and important painter. It seems when he was young, his mother left one day and told him to watch after his little sister Sally. And as she was gone, he found some paints and began to paint a portrait of Sally. And in that process, he made a rather big mess. 
But when his mother came back, she saw the mess but didn't say anything. She merely picked up the paper with the portrait and she said, Why, it's Sally! And she kissed her son on his head. Ever since then, Wyatt West has said, My mother's kiss has made me a painter. And so, lives that God has touched, kisses that God has given, uh, given us, have led us to be different things. Some of us pastors, at the age of 15, I knew what I was going to do because God reached down and touched and kissed me. Perhaps some of you know somebody in the healing professions that they know that God had called them to that. Still, God's love is encouraging. And finally, Christ-like love is with us always, especially when you need it. This is the time of the NBA playoffs, and there's a story about Casey Jones, who played for and then later coached the Boston Celtics. Jones was famous for his unique ability to give his players some unforgettable words of encouragement when they needed it most. If a player scored 50 points or scored the winning basket in the last seconds, the coach might say that he had a nice game. But when a player was really down and struggling, Casey Jones knew what to say. All-star forward Kevin McHale of the Celtics asked Coach Jones about this one day, and Casey Jones said this, Kevin, you've, after you've made the, the, uh, the game-winning basket, you've got 15,000 people cheering for you. TV commentators are rushing towards you to get a quote, and everybody's giving you high fives. You don't need me then. When you need a friend most is when somebody, when nobody is cheering. Wise parents understand that. So do wise spouses and wise friends. Love is supportive. Love encourages. Love uplifts. So the theme of today is confirmation. It's saying yes. Yes to faith in Jesus Christ. Stepping forward and saying, I believe. But what do we believe? One of the things we believe is the new commandment, to love one another. So as Christ has loved us, as Christ has wrapped His arms around us, as Christ has encouraged us, as Christ has uplifted us, as Christ has loved, we are to love. Love one another. Don't act. Do it. Will you bow with me? Eternal God, we do thank you for that love that is undescribable and immense and yet available to all of us. Thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. One of the ways that we do affirm our faith is by repeating certain words that Christians throughout the ages have shared in. One of those is the Apostles' Creed. It's number 881 in your United Methodist Hymnal. It's also printed in your bulletin. Will you please stand with me as we affirm our faith? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated. Let us continue our expression of love for Christ and our neighbors as we give of our tithes and our offerings.
Let's pray. Lord God, we come today grateful for all the acts of love that we have experienced, particularly the act of your sacrifice on the cross. We ask that you accept our gifts of love here today and pray that you inspire us to act in love as well. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. closing hymn today is number 384, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. If God has touched your heart and you would like to respond by time of prayer at the altar or about talking to me about uniting with the church, it would be appropriate as we close our service with hymn number 384.
Go now with God's grace. Go now with God's peace. Go now and love one another. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.